Good Wednesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to today's top news stories, let's take a look outside our weather window. And this is the final full day of winter. And boy, it sure didn't seem like it, did it? Look at the beautiful shot outside our SkyFi Tower camera shot. This is up at uh, Billy Goat. That's up in Okanagan County. You can see portions of Pateras, also portions of Brewster farther up on your screen towards the middle of your screen and the Medhow River joining the Columbia River. And what a beautiful day with all kinds of blue sky around north central Washington. And I'll tell you what, very quiet weather is ahead for us over the next five days. We expect a lot of nice weather here around north central Washington. In fact, even 60 degrees temperatures. Look at that, 55 for tomorrow expected, all the way to 61 on Friday, 62 the high temperature on Saturday before we cool back just a little bit to 59 on Sunday. But keep in mind, 54 is our normal high temperature. So we have a nice stretch of weather to tell you about, and we'll do that coming up a little bit later on. And now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. If your employees don't have symptoms, don't send them to get tested for coronavirus. That's the warning tonight from the Chelan Douglas Health District. The Chelan County PUD will no longer disconnect customers for non-payment. The utility said today it won't cut off service for those who can't pay while it's under coronavirus restrictions. And Safeway and Albertson stores have set aside shopping hours for seniors and other people at high risk from the COVID-19 virus. But first we begin tonight, a human body discovered Tuesday off the trails near Horse Lake Preserve had apparently been there for some time. Our local tell SkyFi cameras watched while investigators were on the scene today. Jason Reinfeld, Chief of Special Operations with the Chelan County Sheriff's Office, said the discovery was made by a group of hikers and their dog. So about uh, 9.30 yesterday morning on uh, March 17th, a group was walking in the area and uh, one of their dogs uh, found some human remains, so they reported it to us. Our, our detectives responded to the scene as well as patrol deputies and uh, soon after the, the remainder of the, uh, the body was located. Uh, we believe they've been there for a while, yes. I, I couldn't give you a time frame on that at this point. Uh, the roadway is closed right now. It's usually closed from uh, late fall or winter until the spring uh, as far as vehicle travel, but people do walk in the area frequently. We haven't been able to confirm identity or gender at this point. It will be under investigation. Our detectives are working on it. We'll be able to gain a lot more information after an autopsy is performed later this week. Reinfeld says deputies are coordinating with known missing person cases in the area, including that of a missing woman reported in Douglas County. Chelan County Coroner Wayne Harris told NCW Life he's working to schedule an autopsy. Well, if your employees don't have symptoms, don't send them to get tested for coronavirus. That's the warning tonight from the Chelan Douglas Health District, which says some local employers have been asking their workers to get the test to prove they're not infected. COVID-19 symptoms include fever, cough, and respiratory difficulty. The district says testing when symptoms aren't present uses up time and resources better spent on legitimate patients. In a press statement, the health district says, quote, please do not impede access to justifiable testing by attempting to have your employees tested just in case. Well, the Chelan County PUD will no longer disconnect customers for non-payment. The utility said today that while it's under coronavirus restrictions, it won't cut off service for those who can't pay. The grace period will last as long as the PUD's main lobby and public facility are closed, and the publicly owned utility will work with customers to make structured payments on their bills. Yesterday, Cascade Natural Gas took a similar step, suspending disconnections and applying for a waiver to dismiss its customers' late fees. Safeway and Albertson stores have set aside shopping hours for seniors and other people at high risk from the COVID-19 virus. Fred Meyer officials said Tuesday that their leadership team is considering doing something similar. At Safeway and Albertson stores, seniors, pregnant women, and people with compromised immune systems can shop from 7 to 9 a.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays. As shopping demands have grown, many stores in North Central Washington have reduced the hours they're open so employees can have time to clean and restock those shelves. Well, coming up next, the doors at Wenatchee City Hall are locked, but Mayor Frank Kuhn says his government's still working to serve its citizens despite the coronavirus pandemic. 
A Chelan suspect is sought on an allegation of child rape. Investigators would like to talk to witnesses to a police shootout in downtown Riverside on March 3rd in which a suspect was killed and a lawsuit against the state from the survivors of the 2014 Carlton Complex fires has failed in the Court of Appeals. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. AC Checker has new owners who put customer service first. When you have to get there on time, call fast, friendly, reliable AC Checker, 663-TAXI. AC Checker has the industry's only on-time or it's free guarantee. Conditions apply. Call AC Checker, 663-TAXI to schedule your cab or schedule online at acchecker.com. Call American Classic Taxi, 663-TAXI. That's 663-8294. Winter is a great time to trade in your current hot tub. Turn your old hot tub into money with Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa's trade-in program. And with Blue Lagoon's home show pricing, you can save $500 to $1,000 off of any new artesian spa or take advantage of a free Bluetooth music experience. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa recommends draining your hot tub every three months. Ask us about our drain and refill special for only $99. Stop on by Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa today. Introducing the most capable Sierra lineup ever. Welcome back. In another news, how does the city of Wenatchee do business during a public health crisis? The doors at City Hall are locked, but Mayor Frank Kuntz says his government's still working to serve its citizens. The mayor dropped by our NCW Life studios this morning to talk with Jefferson Robbins about managing a town in the time of coronavirus. City Hall is closed, and there's a limitation of, of what kind of access people have. Can you tell me a little bit about what the city has decided to do at this point? Yeah, so obviously things have been very fluid over the last week or so. Uh, yesterday morning in a meeting with department heads and some of our city council members uh, in talking with sort of how the, the employees reacting, um, the fact that the federal government had shut down Social Security in our office uh, on the second floor and USDA who's on the third floor also closed. Uh, we were literally the only at least close to the public. We were the only office that was sort of open to the public. And so uh, we really thought about it and staff was getting sort of nervous about dealing with folks in the public and, and taking money and payments and working very close with folks with the six foot uh, social distancing that has been recommended. So for us, we didn't feel like we could just close City Hall. We felt like we had to close sort of all city offices to the public. So we have closed uh, City Hall to the public, our police station to the public, and our public work service center to the public. So folks can still pay their utility bills online. You can still mail us a check. If you're one of those that normally pays with cash, um, you know, we will wait until we get through this and then we're not gonna charge you any sort of penalties or interest if you pay late, for instance. Um, in terms of uh, getting building inspections and those sorts of things done, that office is still open. They're out doing inspections. Uh, don't expect them to get very close to you when they do that. Uh, we could still issue building permits. We can do those online. Um, if someone was out there and we had a meeting, we would open the door for them and allow them to come in. Uh, but for the most part, sort of regular public in and out, uh, we have prohibited that in all of our uh, city buildings at this point. How would the city council handle things like public meetings and, and the city commissions and so forth? Uh, you have to gather a number of people and then you have to welcome another number of people in. Yeah, so at this point, uh, we have also canceled all what we call non-essential meetings. So planning commissions, parks commissions, those will not be meeting. Uh, the city council, uh, generally speaking, tomorrow night would have a work session. We have decided not to have the work session. Those aren't necessarily critical to the day-to-day -day operations of the city. We will meet the following Thursday. So we meet the second and the fourth Thursdays. We'll meet the fourth Thursday in a public session. Uh, council members can call in if they wish. Um, we will allow a certain number of folks into the audience. 
Uh, we will broadcast it in a way where folks can um, ask us questions online if they need to. So uh, the state has given us some leeway to be able to do that. There are things and contracts and things that the city needs to continue to do. So I don't want us to not meet as a governing body uh, for a long period of time. So at this point, we will continue to meet until something changes. Uh, something comes from either the health department, the governor, or someplace else that makes us rethink that. Um, we do have um, a couple of committee meetings that are continuing to meet. So we have a public works committee that met yesterday. We have a public safety meeting that meets tomorrow and our finance committee will meet. And, and I think the reason I really want those to meet is we usually get two council members and myself. And so I can sort of get the feel of what the council is thinking, especially as we start looking at uh, financial issues with the city, um, what projects aren't we gonna do? Cause we fully expect sales tax to really take a hit to the city government coffers. Uh, what can we do to help folks in our community? Uh, the mayor doesn't want to be out there doing that without the consensus of the council or at least some of the council members to say, hey, we talked with the mayor and we agreed with this sort of approach. And then I've been frankly doing emails. I've emailed the council each of the last two days with just sort of the entire council. Here's sort of what we're thinking. Here's sort of where things are going. Uh, here's some decisions that, that we've decided to make. So I emailed them about closing city offices and some other stuff. So I'm just trying to um, keep them all abreast while they're trying to do their normal lives and figure out what that life looks like as well for each of them individually. So just trying to juggle all of that. A Chelan suspect is sought on an allegation of child rape. Sheriff's deputies say Severo Rodriguez Diaz, who's 21, sexually assaulted a 13-year-old girl in Chelan back in February. When the child's family learned of the alleged assault, deputies said Rodriguez fled Chelan and may have traveled to California. Prosecutors charged him earlier this month with second-degree child rape. He's now wanted on a police warrant. Investigators would like to talk to witnesses to a police shootout in downtown Riverside back on March 3rd, in which a suspect was killed. Wenatchee Police Sergeant Nathan Hahn, spokesman for the North Central Washington Special Investigation Unit, said after reviewing video footage of the incident, there are four people that they'd like to interview. There are, they are a man and two women in a Subaru who were seen at the gas pumps at Riverside Grocery at the time of the shooting, and also a man in a Jeep SUV who was seen leaving the store. 39-year-old Ryan Eugene Bass of Okanagan County was shot and killed after being confronted by an OMAC police detective and Okanagan County deputies. The sheriff's office says Bass pulled a gun and began firing as they were preparing to arrest him on a felony warrant for burglary, domestic violence, and cyber, cyber stalking charges. The deputies and detective returned fire. Well, a lawsuit against the state from the survivors of the 2014 Carlton Complex fires has failed in the Court of Appeals. The quarter million acre fire destroyed homes in Pateras, Malat, and elsewhere, and more than 300 plaintiffs sued Washington's Department of Natural Resources in 2015, claiming the agency was negligent in its efforts to suppress the blaze on DNR land. But an Okanagan County judge dismissed the case, and on Tuesday, the appellate court agreed. The three-judge panel says under state law and precedent, the DNR has no liability for the fire spread. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Stay with us. You want to help others. You need a solid career. You can have both with help from Charter College. Our 10-month medical assistant program prepares you to work in healthcare settings like physician offices, rehab centers, and clinics. You'll learn to take vitals, assist with exams, administer injections, and maintain records. When you're ready to launch a rewarding healthcare career, stop by our campus at 595 Grant Road across from Safeway or visit chartercollege.edu. Coming home should never be a chore. Let Mary Maids of Wenatchee customize all your cleaning needs. Weekly, bi-weekly, special occasion. Do you have a vacation home that needs cleaning? We clean them too. Locally owned and operated, let Mary Maids do the cleaning while you focus on your family and friends. Mary Maids has special offers to fit your budget. Request your free cleaning estimate today, 509-663-1710.
It's estimated that one third of Americans do not have a financial plan. At DA Davidson, their advisors are working to change that because they understand the importance of planning for the future. At DA Davidson, they believe in partnering together to build a strategy tailored to your needs. They spend the time and have the knowledge to help keep your financial future on track. Let DA Davidson Financial Advisors of Wenatchee put the strength of advice to work for you. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. In tonight's feature story, local school districts are doing what they can to ease the burden of parents who suddenly have hungry kids at home. NCW Life's Eric Granstrom has more. We've all seen the social images of grocery stores being slammed and empty shelves all around. That doesn't help parents who suddenly need to make sure their at-home kids have lunch. Well, local school districts are stepping in to help. Eastmont Food Services are providing lunch to any child or teen age 18 and under, and they don't even need to be enrolled in the district. Lunches can be picked up one per child at Rock Island, Grant, and Cascade Elementary Schools and Sterling Middle School. The Wenatchee School District Nutrition Services team provided meals to 800 195 kids on Tuesday. Meals are being provided at all the schools in the Wenatchee District from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. except Valley Academy, Westside High School, and Wenatchee Valley Tech. The Cashmere School District just got to go ahead and will start offering free breakfast and lunch grab-and-go meals Thursday. Meal distribution will be provided by their bus route on a two-hour delay. Curbside meal pickup is available from 10 to 11 a.m. at Vail Elementary School as well. Free lunch programs are also available through Cascade, Chelan, and other surrounding districts. Parents are asked to check their school district web pages for more information. With NCW Life Channel News, I'm Eric Grandstrom. Time now for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. And before we get to all those details, beautiful shot, isn't it? Outside our weather window, looking down at the beautiful Wenatchee Valley from our Wenatchee Heights uh, cross camera. And thank you to Localtel for providing this beautiful shot from our PTZ camera. What a day today. Today, actually, our last full day of winter. First day of spring is tomorrow, not until 11.50 p.m., but today's still our last full day of winter, and boy, it felt a lot like spring, didn't it, with lots of blue sky out there, temperature-wise, where we should be for this time of year. In fact, right on the money, 55 unofficially. We might go up just a little bit from that later on. 55 is normal. 30 is our uh, overnight low. 35 is where we should be for this time of year. 70 degrees, our record high. That was set back in 1978, and 21 it's a record low, and that was in 1965. Have not picked up any new precipitation the past 24 hours. We're at sunrise now at 7.06, and sunset is at 7.12. Let's take a peek at how your Thursday will shape up, and boy, you're going to like it a lot like today. In fact, temperatures almost right on the same mark as today. We'll see a few more clouds, though, in our Thursday forecast. Just a weak system moving through. 59 on Moses Lake tomorrow, 58 at Afreda. 56 then in Quincy, 55 in Wenatchee, also you folks at Ellensburg at 55, a little bit cooler in the higher elevations of our valley, any at a 53, Cashmere 54, also OMAC tomorrow, you're high at 54 degrees. Let's get to that surface loop now and tonight, there's not a whole lot to tell you about folks over these next at least five days, but some changes toward the end of the forecast. Tonight mostly clear, we will see calm wind conditions, overnight lows about where we should see them for this time of year. By the time we get into Thursday and as I mentioned our first day of spring mostly sunny light wind it will be mild out there there is a weak system spinning its way out in the Pacific and that will bring us just a few more clouds for Thursday but I wouldn't worry about it too much as I mentioned temperatures about like today in the mid 50s as we get into Friday Things are going to get nice, mostly sunny, calm and warmer. We are talking 60s across almost all of central and eastern Washington on Friday. Same goes for Saturday as well. We'll see temperatures just unseasonably warm. Maybe a few 40s will move down into the Cascades, but for the most part, we are going to be sunny and unseasonably warm right through the weekend. 
partly cloudy skies as we get to the end of the weekend on Sunday. Still mild though with temperatures on Sunday in the upper 50s, maybe 60 for parts of north central Washington. And then as we start our next work week, things begin to change a little bit. Low pressure slides just in between high pressure and another high pressure inland and that'll bring some shower activity into a north central Washington. About a 20% chance of the wet stuff for us here in Wenatchee. So not a great chance of rain and that'll stay for Tuesday as well. Mostly cloudy skies on Tuesday will cool back a bit to about normal on Tuesday with a 20% chance of showers. But all in all, things look warm and very, very nice as we get into our first weekend of spring. Let's take a look now at your Patriot Plumbing, Heating and Cooling. Seven day forecast, 33 the overnight low tonight. Mostly sunny and mild for Thursday. I think that should be really partly cloudy. I think we'll see a few more clouds on Thursday. 60 our high temperature on Friday, all the way up to 62 on Saturday. Boy, get outside and enjoy this weekend. Partly cloudy Sunday and 59 and then just a slight cool down with clouds and some shower activity expected. 57 Monday and 54 the high temperature on Tuesday. And that's a look at your local weather forecast coming up next tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Hi, this is Brian Snyder with Black Rock Asphalt Services here in Wenatchee, your local Black Rock Seal Coat Company. Have you looked at your driveway or parking lot lately? Is it gray and oxidized? Does it have cracks that have not been taken care of? Or do you have striping that is pretty much non-existent? Please give us a call locally here, 509-665-9769. Learn more at blackrockasphaltsealcoating.com. I'm Tom from Alpine Air Heating and Cooling. At Alpine Air, we think of ourselves as customer service oriented retailers. When you make an appointment, please visit our store, meet our people, see our shop. We are serious about heating and air conditioning. Carrier and Alpine Air are offering huge factory rebates and financing options for all your needs. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpine Air. Call for your free replacement estimate. Heat and air, call Alpine Air, 662-6846. And now it's a sports update on the NCW Life Channel. And a happy Wednesday to you. The Seahawks have been quiet so far since the NFL free agency began on Monday. They did lose a player to the market yesterday. Defensive lineman Quentin Jefferson has reportedly agreed to a two-year deal for the Buffalo Bills. Jefferson, who will turn 27 later this month, had three and a half sacks, 26 combined tackles, 10 quarterback hits, a fumble recovery, and three passes defensed in 14 games in 2019, 12 of which he started. According to the NFL insider Adam Kaplan, Seahawks did sign an offensive lineman Tuesday. B.J. Finney, who has been a backup offensive lineman for the Pittsburgh Steelers for the past four years, has agreed to a two-year deal with Seattle. Finney appeared in 59 games over the past four seasons, including all 16 in each of the past two years. Of course, the Tom Brady rumors continue. Looks like he's heading to Tampa Bay. Well, Tuesday's closure of schools across Washington has also meant the cancellation of all spring sports. For high schoolers, that means no games or practice. It has left coaches and athletic directors with many questions as to what happens when school gets back in session. The executive director of the Washington Interscholastic Activities Association, Mike Hoffman, announced in a video to administrators, coaches, and athletes that the spring state championships will go on. First of all, we're taking into consideration that for our senior athletes, this is their very last chance to compete in high school. And I've gotten some very compelling uh, stories shared with me of kids who have spent an incredible amount of time, either because they missed last season, they didn't perform as well as they did, or they just wanted to make this last opportunity the best it is. So we're gonna do everything in our power to make that possible without jeopardizing health and safety. If we are able to return to school after April 24th, we will host our state championships as scheduled. If that date gets pushed longer, uh, we will provide updates depending on what we are hearing at that time. So again, uh, we're out of school till April 24th statewide. If we are able to return, state championships will go as scheduled. Now there has been some speculation that some programs will continue holding practices even without a coach present. Hoffman advises against that. What we ask in the interim is coaches and athletic directors and any other leaders in buildings, please follow the governor's directive. Do not encourage, wink, wink, or ignore 
our students getting together to compete in practice. We understand they want to be together. We understand they want to be ready if given the opportunity. But again, not at the jeopardizing people's health and safety. As we continue to get educated on this disease, we're finding people who are asymptomatic or are contagious. We're finding out people are contagious before they even show symptoms. We're finding out that uh, younger and younger people are contracting this. So for the benefit of everybody and to speed up the recovery process for the entire state, please follow the directives and show leadership that directs your students not to get together to do this. Let them do their thing on their own time, their own way. That's in compliance with Governor Inslee's request. But again, please follow it, lead with integrity. We will continue to provide updates, what it would look like, assuming we get to return after April 24th, as we vet those out. Athletic directors for various schools and leagues are meeting over the phone and electronically to discuss strategies on how individuals and teams may qualify for the postseason. There's no decision yet on whether the spring sports schedule will pick up on game dates when schools get back in session or if they'll try to make up any missed competitions. With the basic shutdown of any sports related, uh, anything sports related, I'm challenged to find things to report on and we certainly miss our chance to broadcast local sports. Today, I continue my series on no sports, no problem. So what's a sports guy do when there's no sports? Well, you make up your own games, like paperclip basketball. Really easy. All right, so here you go. You take some tape and you uh, put it down on the table. Ask mom and dad if it's okay to put it on the dining room table, first of all. So you put that down, you've got three cups. You got one point, two point, and three points, just kind of the opposite of what normally is for basketball. And then you got five uh, paper clips. And the idea, get the paper clips into the cups and keep score. There we go. And shoot for one. Oh, off the mark. Shoot for two. Oh, there's one point. Okay, I'm gonna shoot for two points. Oop, off the mark, no good. And I'll shoot for another two point. Oh, got it. Okay, now here's a three point shot. Oh, just short. Now, if you want to make it a little more sporting and kind of more basketball-ish, you can take some different sized mugs and make the shallower or the narrow sized opening a three-point shot and the larger one a two-point shot. Try the freaking pong ball first. Of course, this means you're going to have to chase it around too. So, three-point shot. Oh, not quite. Three-point shot with the golf ball or with the ping pong ball. Point shot. So what's a sports guy do with no sports? You make up your own games, sort of basketball-ish. Try it yourself. Send me what you make up, and maybe we'll include it on the air. There you go, Grant. That's sports news. Back to you. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. I'm feeling for you, buddy. Now let's check in with Dan Coons for a look at what's coming up tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Dan. Thank you very much, Grant. Jefferson Robbins will be sitting down with the Mayor of Wenatchee, Frank Kuntz, and we're going to have that complete conversation with how the city is responding to the COVID-19 outbreak. We'll have that conversation in the second half of Thursday's edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Unfortunately, since the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society is closed to the general public, we won't be having Pet of the Week, which is kind of a bummer, but we'll do whatever we can do to get your Thursday going the right way. Wake Up Wenatchee Valley, live and local, right here at 7 a.m. on Thursday morning. Grant, back to you. Thank you, Dan. We'll be watching, and that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com, or you just give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us, and have a great night. have a fun or interesting video you'd like to see featured here on the NCW Life channel? It's easy. All you have to do is send us an email at newsphotos at ncwlife.com. This is Caitlin Hedersheet, the producer of the NCW Life magazine. Each week, I'm bringing you a look behind the scenes of the faces, places, and events that make North Central Washington the place we call home. Tune in every weekday for an in-depth look at a new topic each week. 
from local artists in their studios to businesses breaking barriers that might surprise you and everything in between. Join me on the NCW Life magazine right here on the NCW Life channel.